uh, this lecture is about the gluteal region and posterior compartment of the thigh. So, we started with the gluteal region. The gluteal region is a transitional region between the trunk and the free lower limb. It includes two parts of the lower limb. The rounded prominent posterior region, which is the buttocks, and the lateral, usually less prominent hip or hip region, which overlies the hip joint and the greater trochanter of the femur. So, in the gluteal region, we had two parts the part above the hip joint and the buttocks. What are the boundaries? The boundaries of the hip of the gluteal region is iliac crest superior and medially is the intergluteal cleft or the natal cleft. Inferiorly we had the skin all underlying the buttocks and the gluteal fault. Uh, here, this is the natal cleft, and uh, this is the level of the iliac crest, and here, this is the gluteus uh, or buttocks, gluteal fault. So, here, this is the region of the gluteus, the gluteal region. Here, this triangle represents the sacrum, as is here, to Dumbbells, two dumbbells can be seen here. Over lie the superior iliac spine. And here we have the posterior median furrow. And here this is the surface anatomy of the muscle. So the cutaneous innervation of the lower limb. So the skin over the gluteal region as we see here in this diagram is innervated by the posterior MI from L1, L2 and L3 and here this region close to the natal cleft is by S1, S2 and S3 and this side over the fold, gluteal fold is innervated by posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. We have two very important ligaments which forming the fibrous structure of the pelvis. These are the sacrotuberous ligament and the sacrospinous ligament. Sorry for this technical issue. The so sacrotuberous ligament and the sacrospinous ligament. So the sacrotuberous ligament is extended from the ischial tuberosity to the posterior iliac spine, lower sacrum, and the coccyx. It converts the sacrospinous marrow. Well, uh, it's converted to the sacrospinous, the lesser sciatic knot, into the lesser sciatic form. The sacrospinous ligament extends from the ischial spine to the lower sacrum and coccyx. It converts the greater sciatic knot into greater sciatic form. As you see here, this is the sacrotuberous ligament. This is the sacrotuberous ligament, and this is the, the sacrospinous ligament. 
again if we go back to the bone we can see here this is a greater sciatic notch and this is the ilium and here this is the ischial spine okay and this is the ischial tuberosity and this is the sacrum and this is the coccyx so the ligament from uh, the sacrum and from the lower part of the iliac to the tuberosity of the ischial we call it the sacro tuberous sacro from the sacrum tuberous from tuberosity sacro tuberous ligament and the ligament here from the sacrum to the ischial spine we call it the sacro spinous ligament so by these two ligaments as you see here this is the greater sciatic notch and here this is the lesser sciatic notch we have this notch change it into complete foramina you see now the greater sciatic notch here became a greater sciatic foramen and the lesser sciatic notch became lesser sciatic foramen by the presence of these two ligaments here and two ligaments here So the structure passing in the greater sciatic foramen are the piriformis muscle, which is a key muscle. It's important to indicate other structure as going above it we call it superior and below it we can call it inferior. So the piriformis muscle, the superior and inferior gluteal vessels and nerve, internal bidundal vessels and bidundal nerve, sciatic nerve, which is the largest nerve in the body the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve or we can call it also the posterior cutaneous nerve of the side and the nerve to obturator internus and quadratus femoris muscle this is the structures passing through the greater sciatic form other structure passing in the, into the lesser sciatic form this structure passing through the greater usually goes from the pelvis they goes into the gluteal region and the lesser sciatic palmy usually transmit structure from gluteal region to the premium so it's provide the pathway to the tendon of obturator internus the nerve of obturator internus and the internal bidundal vessels and the redundant nerve so as you see part of the structure emerge from the greater and then go back again through the lesser to entering the premier region as we see here from inside this is the sacrospinous ligament this is the sacro tuberous ligament this is the greater sciatic knot foramen and this is the lesser sciatic foramen uh, so we talk about the five structures of the gluteal region so let's move to the muscles muscles of the gluteal region the muscles of the gluteal region include three main muscles which are the glutei muscles plus the tensor fascia lata the gluteus muscle the gluteus maximus it's one of the largest um, prominent muscles here as the buttocks you see this is the gluteus maximus so it originates from the ilium behind the posterior gluteal line it also take origin from lumbar fascia, the lateral mass of the sacrum, coccyx, and sacrotuberous ligament. Insertion one quarter into the gluteal tuberosity and three quarters into iliotibial tract. So one quarter is inserted into the femur and the remaining part inserted into the iliotibial tract which is a fibrous tract band that inserted into the lateral tibial condyle as the gerdus tubercle 
The nerve supply of the gluteus maximus is by the inferior gluteal nerve. The action is to extend and rotate the side laterally. The main action is extension of the side. We can call it extension of the hip or extension of the side and also lateral rotation of the hip or lateral rotation of the side. It's also called anti-climbing muscles. As we see here, this is the gluteus maximus. And this is part of its origin. And here, this is part of the lumbar fascia. This is part of the sacrum, coccyx. All of this represent the origin of this muscle. And this is the insertion of this muscle. As we see here, part of it inserted into bone as a gluteal tuberosity and the remaining inserted into this tract which is fibrous bands we call it the iliotibial tract second muscle is the gluteus medius it's originated from the gluteal surface of the idiom between the middle and the posterior gluteal lines it's inserted into the lateral surface of the greater trochan. The third muscle is the gluteus minimus. It's originated from the gluteal surface of the ilium between the middle and posterior gluteal lines. It's inserted at the anterior surface of the greater trochan. Please try to remember. The gluteus minimus is inserted at the anterior surface of the GT, whether the gluteus medius inserted at the lateral surface of the greater trochan. The innervation of both gluteus medius and minimus is by the superior gluteal nerve. And the actions of this muscle, the two muscles abduct the hip. So it's the main abductor of the hip joint. Their anterior fibers rotate the thigh medially. And stabilize the pelvis during walking. So the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus had a very important action regarding abduction of the hip and medial rotation of the hip and stabilization of the pelvis during walking so here if we look at this picture yes here we can see this is the gluteus minimus it's found it here just from the outer gluteal surface of the ilium and this is above here is the gluteus medius and this is the gluteus maximus had been removed and this is the tendon or insertion of the gluteus maximus also had been removed this is the gluteus medius origin and here this is the insertions as you see here the medius is a little bit inserted laterally to the gluteus minimus this is underneath is the gluteus minimus muscle and here is the pyriformis muscle So, if we had a damage to the superior gluteal nerve, can lead to positive Tlindelenberg sign, which have a specific type of gate, we call it the waddling gate. Waddling gate. Uh, so, uh, this happened because the gluteus medius and minimus usually contract. And this contraction it prevents the pelvis from tilting during walking onto the opposite side. So if it's if it's this picture showing this uh, Tlindelenberg sign, as we see the pelvis drop to the other side because this gluteus medius and minimus is not working. So this is not work if it's working properly the pelvis here will not drop at this side okay it should be level it should be kept 
stabilize at this level or a little bit up but it never drop if it drops this means that these muscles are not working and this is canon as positive Lundgren-Berg sign and the gate is called waddling gate the tensor fascia lata muscle is originate from external hip of the iliac crest external lip right, sorry of the iliac crest between the anterior superior iliac spine and the tubercle of the crest it's inserted into the iliotibial tract so into this iliotibial tract two muscles the tensor fascia lata and part of the gluteus maximus are inserted and this itself is inserted into the lateral condyle of the tibia at the georges tubercle the nerve supply of this muscle is by superior gluteal nerve so like the gluteus medius and minimus the action of this muscle it assists the gluteus maximus in extending the knee joint and assists the gluteus medius and minimus in to stabilize the pelvis during walking so it's assisting muscle assist the gluteus maximus and also assist the gluteus medius and minimus but we should we should know at which action the piriformis muscle the key muscle at the region of the gluteal uh, it's originated from an anterior surface of the medial three pieces of the sacrum inserted into the medial surface of the greater torcanda it's innervated by anterior mi of s1 and s2 as you see here this is the piriformis muscle very important muscle and it's a key muscle in the gluteal region as you see coming here through the greater sciatic foramen as it's originated from the sacrum from middle three pieces of the sacrum to be inserted here at the middle part of the greater trochanter of the femur so we have structure passing above and structure passing below this muscle as we see the superior gluteal artery superior gluteal nerve and lower part of the gluteus medius all of these are founded just above to the muscle this is a superior gluteal artery and this is the gluteus medius muscle here yeah, this is and as we see inferior to this muscle to the piriformis muscle here we have the largest nerve in the body which is a sciatic nerve we have the inferior gluteal artery inferior gluteal nerve posterior cutaneous nerve of the side we have also nerve to quadratus femoris nerve to obturator internus and we had the bidondal nerves also bidondal nerves and the internal bidondal artery the obturator internal muscle it's originated from the inner surface of, of the obturator membrane and inserted into the medial surface of the greater trochanter it has its own innervation from the lumbar sacral plexus which is the nerve to obturator internus this muscle here is the obturator internus superior and inferior gemelli so the superior gemellus uh, it's origin from the ischial spine inserted at the medial surface of the greater trochanter where the, the, 